Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship. We are glad that each of you are worshiping with us today. We also welcome those that are uh, viewing our service online. There are, as you look through our update, there are just a lot of activities this time of year especially. Uh, first of all, you'll find a pink uh, poinsettia order form. Uh, those are due today, so please complete those, attach your cash or check, and leave it in the office, or give it to Karen Howe. Or you can put it in the offering. That's a good idea. Thank you, Karen. Um, there's prayer concerns. We need to continue to pray for those in our congregation. Uh, this Thursday, or this Wednesday, uh, there will be no food court. It is uh, the ecumenical Thanksgiving service. The C Avenue churches uh, get together this year. It's at St. Mark's Lutheran. It's Wednesday the 23rd at 7 o'clock. I was telling Pastor Gregory it's my favorite night of the whole year, which sounds really weird, I know. Um, but I go to bed that night and I go, wow, I have four days off and I'm not traveling somewhere. I'm at home and I get to spend four days at home. So I love that. Um, live nativity and soup supper, make sure to have your, uh, that on your calendars. It's become a great tradition uh, that Cameron has brought to us. And uh, it is December 14th. There is a meeting today in the conference room following the service if you're interested in uh, being a part of that. So there's lots of ways to serve and to be a part of that wonderful holiday tradition here at Knoll Ridge. Um, so offering, offering can be left in the offering plate at the back of the church. There's also one over here. So as you leave your service today, you can place your offerings in either one. And then, as you know, we do communion um, a little differently, but we believe that all believers in Christ are welcome at our communion table. So you can pick up your self-serve communion as you enter the service today. You can come forth during the communion time and partake of the bread and of the cup uh, from the elder and from the diaconate. Or if you are unable to come forward and you would like served in your pew, just raise your hand and the diaconate will get that for you. But all are welcome at the communion table and uh, lots of options for you. Uh, also, there's these little postcards, and they're on both sides, which talk about all of our holiday and Advent activities, and those are at the Welcome Center. So I always pick up several, and I pass them out to friends, and maybe put them in the, a card to send to someone, but just let them know about all of the activities that we have coming up and how they can plug into those. I think... We have a quick announcement from Revival Theater Company. Is that correct? Yes. My colleague is at the microphone. You need to be at the microphone, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, I see some familiar faces here. I'm Lori Mock with Revival Theater Company. And um, I wanted to come today to thank everyone here at the parish and the pastor and everyone for all of the support that you give us at Revival Theater Company. It's greatly appreciated. And, and we're very honored to have you support us. Another reason I stopped by is, is I wanted to um, let everyone know that we're doing a holiday fundraising on December 10th, which is a Saturday. The doors open at 6.30, and the show starts at 7.30 at the Doubletree Hotel downtown. The show we're going to be presenting is Plaid Tidings, which we have a plaid here. So Joe will be featured as one of the plaid guys. There's four of them, and it's a very unique show. I think you will all enjoy it and have fun. We'll have entertainment, we'll have refreshments, and it should be a good time by everyone. So if you're interested in um, reserving a, a seat or a table, just let me know. I'll be here after the service, and we can give you all the information you need. But again, thank you for your support. Also, if you are interested in helping decorate the church next Saturday, beginning at 9 a.m., it's always a fun activity, so you'll see um, our lovely sanctuary transform into a winter wonderland. So, um, isn't that right? Sure. 
<laughs> so um, again, uh, we wish you a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. If you're traveling, be safe. And uh, don't go to Buffalo, New York. They have like six feet of snow. So <laughs> anybody playing? Anybody have relatives out there? Sue? What now? What now? Nearby. 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 Looking at the news, six feet of snow in like 24 hours. No, thank you. Ugh. Not fun. So would you please join me in prayer? Glorious God, as winter is knocking on our door, we are aware of less sunlight and shorter days. The nights are crisp, and the smell of turkey and pumpkin pie will soon fill our family's kitchens. As the seasons change, so do the plans you have for us. Lord, we have so many reasons to be thankful to you. We need to stay in touch with you and keep our prayer life strong. Take time to read the Bible and share our faith with those that we encounter each and every day. Perhaps share our faith with a coworker buy food for a holiday pantry, or support a struggling charity with a financial donation. We understand that you have great plans for each one of us. There are those in need all around us, and it is at this time of year that those needs are even more evident. We are thankful for the bounty that only you can provide. Open our hearts and minds today to hear Pastor G's message on I Choose Thankful. You are a mighty and wonderful God. Amen. If you're able, would you stand with us this morning? Thanksgiving's upon us, and we're going to sing some Thanksgiving songs together to praise the Lord this morning. We're going to start with an old hymn reimagined by the praise team. We hope you enjoy it. Join me.
going to try that again. We're going to try that again. For all that you've done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do. For all that you promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. I want you to listen really, really carefully because what you're going to do, parents, you're going to look at your child and one by one you are going to answer the following question. I thank God every day for you because. Okay? So we're going to start down here. We're going to go all the way down. so caring. Awesome. I thank God every day for you because you make me laugh. I thank God every day for you because you make me happy. I thank God every day for you because you make me smile. I thank God every day for you because I love you. I thank God every day for you because you make me lose my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Even, okay? I thank God every day for Grace and Isabel because 
They are so talented and smart, and I'm very blessed. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, for the days that are good and the days that are not so good, help us to remember how thankful we are for all the gifts you give us. Amen. Thank you, parents. You know, I thank God every day for all of you, but one thing that the ministry has taught me in the last seven years is that I have a lot less hair. Uh, <clears throat> every year it goes away faster and faster, so I always attribute that to the church, but maybe it's just a me thing, but anyways, we do love you all, and we all do give thanks to God for the many gifts that God has blessed us with, and so let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer, starting out with a moment of silence and gratitude. Creating and sustaining and redeeming God, you are the giver of all of life's gifts. And on this morning, on this Sunday in which your people gather, we give thanks to you for the ways in which you continue to move in our lives, the ways in which your spirit continues to speak to our hearts and to our souls. We thank you, O oh God, for the bounty of nature, for the changing of the seasons around us that remind us of the ebbs and flow of our own lives, of the seasons and journeys that we face ahead. We thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity, this opportunity to gather in this place of worship and to find rest in the midst of the storm. It is the world around us. Allow this time to speak anew to our hearts. Allow us to set aside that which holds us back and cling to a deeper and more meaningful relationship with you. On this week ahead, O oh God, Grant that we may be grateful, grateful for the blessings that we have, for the meals that we share, for the families and friends that gather around our tables. And may we also be thankful and aware during the season of the tables where a chair is empty the places where a heart is missing. Allow us to be mindful of this life that we have and of the time that you have entrusted to us. May we be good stewards of this gift and gratitude and appreciation to you and to your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? And I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end. And you never do.
Our scripture reading this morning is found in the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians, and we're going to be looking at verses 4 through 13. May we hear this as a living word this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone, for the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds and your souls in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I have learned how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Though I wake to a world with more questions than answers, where dissonant voices ignite division. My heart will stand firm in this decision. I choose thankful. Though I walk through a landscape that is uncharted and foreign, where the once familiar seems lost and forgotten, I will remember that nothing is unexpected to my Father in heaven, and I choose thankful. Though I live each day uncertain of tomorrow, I will accept that tomorrow was never certain and cherish every chance to witness the wonder of creation. I choose thankful. I choose faith in what is unseen, hope for a future beyond the adversity, love spoken despite animosity. I choose to believe. And though the struggles I face may be painful, though it sometimes seems impossible, though I fall a thousand times covered in the dust of failure, I am able to rise. Not because I am strong, not because life is perfect, but because in all circumstances, Jesus lives. When this world stands perplexed, and demands I give a reason for the hope that I have, I can only say that in Jesus' name, I choose thankful. It's not a simple choice, it's not an easy choice, but it is the only choice that brings calm in the storm. Not by my power, but through the strength of Christ alone, I choose thankful. When was the last time that you chose thankful? When was the last time in your life that you paused in a moment of awe and wonder and praise to God? Giving thanks to God for this life that we live and this life in which we animate our bodies. When did you pause last and give thanks to God for the experience of taking a breath in your lung? Breathing in deeply and powerfully the spirit of living God. When was the last time you chose to be thankful? 
may answer that question from a number of different perspectives, depending on your personality. All of us have been created and molded in the image of God, and all of us respond to situations in different ways. For instance, if a glass is half full, an optimist may say that, yes, the glass is half full, but there's room for improvement. A pessimist may say the glass is half empty and there's room for more loss. A realist says the, the glass is half full, period. Half full of water and half full of air. And yet, what is it that causes us to choose to be thankful? What is it that causes us to deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ? What is it that allows us to choose gratitude Instead of fear, we live in a world that is continually in motion, a world that is always rushing towards the finish line. And if life really is a race and a marathon that we're running, then why are we not training our bodies and our souls to run the race that Jesus Christ has set before us? Why do we choose? fear instead of life and life abundant. Humans are interesting creatures, aren't we? So often we choose the very things that make us uncomfortable. We look in the mirror and say, we're not good enough. We look in the mirror and say, you know, I don't want to answer the knock on the door of my heart or my soul, because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what might take place, what might happen. And yet, when we think about the last two or three years, what do we see? We see that God is continually knocking on the doors of our hearts, trying to get our attention. What will it take? Global pandemic? A financial crisis? A diagnosis that you already knew, but you didn't want to hear? Fear. Fear is crippling. Yet fear is also a choice that we make to accept. We can choose to be thankful for the lives that we live. Here in Philippians, Paul is talking to the church. And Paul is at the end of his life and he's looking back with this heavenly perspective. He's in prison and in chains. And so he's writing to the church to encourage them in their walk of faith. Encourage them to train for the marathon that Paul is about to complete. That all of us still have opportunity to finish. And so Paul says, instead of choosing fear, choose to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Give thanks to God for this life that you have, this life that you are to live. Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving in your heart, let your request be made known to God. Choosing to live a life for God requires us to take the first step of faith. And that is to learn to trust God. Now, for some of us, that is harder than others. As human beings, as interesting creatures, we have interesting relationships with one another, and these relationships are flawed. And yet, what we so often do is we project these flawed relationships onto our relationship with God. 
And so when we've had experiences in our past where we've been abused or neglected or held back, we think that God is going to do the same thing to us. We hear these words about, do not be anxious. And we say, yeah, I may be great for the person sitting next to me, but God doesn't care about my problems. God doesn't care about my challenges. See, the reality is, the reason that we don't trust God, it's not a God issue. It's a heart issue. It's a choice that we are making. We can choose to live into grace. We can choose to live into joy. We can choose to hear these words of rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord your God. We can choose those words to make them a part of our life, to allow them to give us a new perspective. Or we can choose to continue to be angry, continue to be lonely, continue to self-loathe ourselves. See, learning to trust God really comes from a place of humility. It comes from a place where in disgust or in anger or in letting go, we finally fall to our knees and we say, God, I've had enough. I've had enough of this self-doubt. I've had enough of this fear. I've had enough of this grief. I've had enough. I'm a loser. And yet, you say, you say that I am your child and I am beloved. So if I'm going to be a loser, let me be a loser for you. Let me lose myself, my wants, my desires, my needs, so that you, the author and the creator and the perfecter of life and life abundant, may be exalted and magnified and lifted up. May I choose to live my life as a reflection of Christ in me instead of living my life in fear of what I am yet to become. Having found the meaning of life, I want to spend my life choosing, choosing these words that Paul writes to be noble and true, and just, and pure, and lovely, and commendable. Choosing to fix your eyes on that which is excellent, and worthy of praise. I choose to put these things into practice. To live in gratitude to God, instead of in fear of actually living. A lot of people think that there's only three ways in which you can look at the world. Pessimist, an optimist, or a realist. There's a fourth. I like to think of it as the eternal perspective. It comes from having walked a long journey, hard faith, It comes from the trials of life, the joys, the sorrows. It allows us to live in a way that we are not defined by our circumstances, but rather our attitudes define the circumstances in which we find ourselves. It allows us to Walk this journey of life and love. 
and in choosing to live for Jesus Christ. Many, many years ago, I was not known as Gregory or Pastor G or Reverend Chambers. In fact, I was known as Little Greg. Growing up in our Kansas City, Kansas, at Central Christian Church, I had the privilege of growing up under another Greg, Big Greg, who was my mentor and a cherished friend and my elder. Big Greg was just about the coolest guy around, loved working out, loved going to the gym, loved swimming in the swimming pool, loved Oklahoma State football. Big Greg taught me how to live life to the fullest, to have this eternal perspective. After my sister died in a car accident in 2004, it was Big Greg and Susan and Brian and Jeff who stepped up to the plate. They didn't have to, but they chose to. They chose to walk with us throughout life's journey, from football games to graduations to weddings to ordinations to hospital hallways and late night text of love every step of the way. That family has been there for us. What I didn't understand back in 2004, or maybe I was just too young to perceive it, was that Big Greg had been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And I think it's appropriate to share these words that Big Greg wrote with you. When I was first diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2004, it was by all means a shock at 48 years old. I wanted to feel sorry for myself. I mean, why not? Everyone seemed to. I have continued to focus on what I couldn't do, like speaking clearly or being able to chew food at times. But that didn't show faith that God was in control, nor was it getting me anywhere. I had to choose between being a victim or a survivor. Grumbling that roses have thorns is a big waste of time. Focusing on the roses themselves enables you to get close enough to experience something much greater. Not being able to chew a steak at times is a big negative. Sharing ice cream with your granddaughters who like it as much as I do is quite a positive. And your response to what life brings you, your choice between victim and survivor will determine your future even more than that which life brings you. I choose ice cream. Ice cream optimism. Maybe that's a good word for the fourth perspective from which we can live life. Choosing to make the most of every moment that we have and making the choice and choosing to be thankful to God. Paul writes in Philippians, I have learned in every situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And what is this secret? What is this key to life that we live? It is learning to choose to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is choosing in the moments of life of uncertainty, in the moments of life of challenge when you don't know which way is up or which way is down, to choose Jesus choosing to live in grace instead of fear, hope instead of anger, 
Knowing that when you're driven to your knees in life, and you will be, you're going to choose God. And find these words as the benchmark of your life. I can do all things. Not some things. Not most things. All things. Through Christ who strengthens me. I can face every circumstance. I can climb every mountain and cross every valley when I choose to not let the circumstances that life has dealt me dictate my attitude. For I can choose to overcome. I can choose to live a life of worth. I can choose to live my life in gratitude to God for the gifts that God has given to us. Knowing that God will grant us the strength to face every single day and to strive to attain that which has been set out before us, this benchmark and this finish line. This past March, 18 years after Big Greg's diagnosis, I had the honor to stand alongside my father and to speak life back to a family that had given me so much life and encouragement over the years. As we celebrated with love and gratitude to our God, the life that Big Greg had chosen to live. And so I ask you, can you too choose this day to live your life with thankfulness to God? Can you choose to be thankful? I think the answer's pretty clear. Yes. Yes, we can and we will. And it begins with us saying these words as the benchmark for our life. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Would you join me in singing our communion song this morning in Christ alone? Yes. Yeah. 
time we come to this table, we choose to give thanks to God for the gifts that God has given to us. And as recorded in God's holy word, that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, take and eat, for this is my body that has been broken for you. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he gave it to them and he said, Take and drink, for this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant that has been poured out for one and for all. So often, as you eat from this bread and you drink from this cup, you choose proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as disciples, we are blessed each and every week to come to this communion table as we celebrate our thankfulness for your son's sacrifice on this day and every day. Let us be mindful as we partake of the loaf and of the cup of his broken body and of his shed blood so that each of our lives can be filled with joy and happiness. We are grateful and forever thankful each and every day. In your name we pray, amen. As we continue to prepare, let us confess our faith. I believe in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I seek to follow him as my Lord and Savior. For our offering meditation, the scripture, Psalms 103, talks of David's desire to praise God for all that he has done. God has bestowed his personal blessings on each one of us. So let me ask, what are you grateful for? What blessings have enriched your life? For me, I am thankful for our church and the fellowship that we share together each and every week. I'm excited and grateful for Pastor Gregory and Catherine as they begin their ministry with us. I'm grateful for my 30-year career in radio sales and to share my income with those in need. For my love of travel and immersing myself in different cultures and for the Tumani schools in Tanzania and my passion to help these students. 
So we give to be blessed. If we participate in the harvest that God has for each of us, let us sow our gifts to him today. We give from the heart. We give because that's why God created us, to enjoy him and to bring that joy to others. You each have many gifts. Some are called to give more and some are called to give less. But when we are called to give, we are called to give generously. Collection plates are at the back of the service. Uh, when you leave, you may place your tithes and offerings, and we thank you for your giving. We will now accept the morning offering. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings to do the work that you desire within our church, our community, and your greater world. In your name we pray. Amen. There's one here that's new to the community. You've yet to establish a church home, or perhaps you feel that God is calling you to make that good confession of faith this morning. We invite you to do so as together we sing our hymn of invitation, number 430, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. said the Lord God from on high, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness, I have drawn you unto me, and I will continue to set your hearts on fire with my amazing love. Amen. <laughs> 